pressure applied to a point on the underside of your big toe triggers vivid technicolor memories of Christmas's past. A trained therapist removes your sock. You lie back with a sigh on the soft cushioned hydraulic massage couch. At your signal, the therapist tightens the precision-made nickel-plated West German toe screw. Synapses fire. Instantly, you are transported back to the era depicted in prints by Courier and Ives. Your childhood. You're a little girl again, with sausage curls. You're in a coat and hat, your plump hand snug in a muff on your lap. Beneath your coat, you're in stiff crinolines, and you're sitting stiffly on a hard wooden bench in a lurching steam train, which comes to a halt somewhere in the Connecticut countryside, unable to proceed until the track is cleared of snow. The poor passengers in second class, you think, they must be freezing. It's cold enough in the first class carriage to see your breath, which is sweet and inoffensive, unlike the mephitic exhalations of Mr. Preak, your guardian, who is slumped, snoring beside you, and to whom you are tethered by a thong. He is taking you to the orphanage, having embezzled the trust fund left you by your parents. A boy just old enough to have sprouted a shadow of down on his upper lip appears, gesturing that you should follow him. The distant laughter of his cronies quickens your pulse. You indicate the tether which binds you to Mr. Preak. The boy cuts it deftly with a pocket knife. Hand in hand, the two of you descend from the train to join a crowd of children in a snowball fight. In the ensuing melee, you find yourself encumbered by your coat. Shedding it, you seem to be shedding an immense weight of sadness. The world in its pristine coat of snow seems brand new. Suddenly, a well-aimed volley of snowballs drives you back into the shadow of the locomotive. You look up, awed, at the iron horse. A network of thin plumbing crawls over its flanks like a labyrinthine flute, from the stops of which white steam and white noise are hissing. You're dwarfed by the mighty wheels which look too massive for movement, yet suddenly, with an explosion that throws you flat, they complete a half turn. The whistle blows, too loud. You clap your hands to your ears and clench shut your eyes. Open them, quick, the train's moving. You'll be left behind. Wildly, you leap to your feet, looking around for your friends but steam envelops you in a milky, scalding void. Is it the wind of the train's wake that lifts you like thistledown, or a strong arm? When you next open your eyes, you're lying wind-whipped on the cold metal deck of the cab on board the roaring locomotive. The fireman, a muscular midget stripped to his waist, is shoveling toys into the blazing maw of the furnace. Beside him, leaning on the throttle and grinning malevolently, his sooty beard streaming out behind him, the engineer is unmistakably Santa Claus. You inch back into the shadows, hoping he doesn't notice you. He looks deranged, but he sees you. He sees everything. Feel sorry for the passengers in second class, eh? He booms. And then his laughter, his terrible booming laughter. 